Go. Go. Oh my <laughs> god. What? <laughs> you guys both. <laughs> we both okay. failed. <laughs> well, Token and, and Rod, both seeing that they're in an immediate danger, begin to run for the stairs, but the combination of, thank you, Rod, the slick saliva all over your body and the gore <laughs> means that you slip so hard uh, that you face plant again, further smashing your nose. <laughs> There's no more modifier to be made with this, but I would say that it's so smashed that without like surgical help, you're not going to get that <laughs> that modifier off. Your face is just a mess, um, and and you're on the ground now. The zombies are so slow though that you're not caught. They're just you. You've just smashed your face really bad. Yeah. Token in the same nature. You tried to run up there. You slipped and hit your head. And you're dazed a little bit, and uh, you're discombobulated. So if left to your own devices, uh, if not helped, there's a chance. How would we do this? I want to say... You're basically saying I'm knocked down and can't move unless Your dexterity is at minus three right now, because you're... You, you <coughs> suffered a concussion, basically. Okay. How's that? Great, yeah. I'll, I'll say... You want to say that I'm shaky at a minus yes. three? there okay. you go. So using the game mechanic. Yep. So he's shaky. He just smashed his face on the, on the ground. And both of you are looking at each other now what do you do uh well rod go ahead what do you do i um i uh because <laughs> i know what i'm doing i'm waiting for you i'm following you i'm panicking okay uh i start to once again shape change into a creature to the best of my ability let's see how well 12 I shape change Perfect. into one of those goats that can jump on the mountains that's like sitting on a yeah. fucking flat, like a truly Mountain vertical goat. wall. Yeah. yeah. Billy goat. Yep. And I'm, at, I'm one of those and I'm just like jumping up to the. the you top. won't even have to roll for it. Then you turn into that. You run up there. No problem. Yeah. You're a native creature of hard terrain. Rod, your friend just turned into a mountain goat and bounded <laughs> up the stairs. What do you do? I do not think I can turn into a mountain goat <laughs> to also go up these stairs. Correct. Um, uh, what do I do? You tell me. All right, you tell Rod. Me the zombies How, uh, are closing in on you. <laughs> should I try running one more time up these stairs? Was I injured enough that I cannot move? No, your only modifier was that your face is really messed up, so you're fine to move at normal decks. <laughs> Let's try this again. Let's Go try for it. running another time. I'm gonna say the zombies are closer though, so if you fail, they're gonna start to get at you. That's cool. Is he rolling dex? What are you making him roll? Yeah, dex at minus one, which is just your normal. <laughs> oh, I did minus two, so it would be it would be six. Uh, well, it's minus <laughs> one for for your normal minus one, and then minus one for the gore, so you do fail, right? Yep. Uh, okay, so you your friend turned into a goat, ran up the stairs. You kind of <laughs> collect yourself and start to make your way up there. You slip on the half smash skull of a zombie and you collapse up against the wall you are now facing the the tide of zombies um i will let you so one of the zombies kind of lunges for you you will get an attack against it first though because it's so slow moving rod okay. i message do what you want to cast <laughs> <laughs> wonderful as my uh my good goat friend uh helps quickly me. there's a zombie closing in on you uh, I want to turn undead because we're all friends. So what? you need to roll plus your wisdom, Rod, which is a three. So 2d6 plus three. Nails it. Boom. On a 10 plus... Well, Jeff, this is what happens. I'll message yeah. it to you. What happens? Oh, you're just going to... Okay. I'll I mean, I, I could just read it because you're going to read it. So on a 7+, plus, so long as you continue to pray and brandish your holy symbol, so you need to find out what the holy symbol is. No undead may come in within reach of you. On a 10+, ten, ten plus, you also momentarily daze intelligent undead and cause mindless undead to flee. Aggression breaks the effects as long as they're to act normal. Intelligent undead may still find ways to harry uh, you from afar. They're clever like that. Okay. So in a, in a moment of panic, then, Rod fires up his hands and and says, Warrior Jesus, be gone with him, and, and pushes forward this wave of energy, and it hits the wall of zombies, and all of the zombies look kind of confused and start to, to walk backwards and shuffle out in the other direction. Rod, what do you do? 
feel pretty good about myself that <laughs> that I knew I could do it. I knew I could do it. Uh, all all the zombies should be gone by now, and I should be able to make my way up. Yep. Pretty easily. Not even gonna make you roll for it. You're very carefully footed at this point in time, avoiding all the slick spots. You uh, gingerly make your way up there. Uh, to token, Scuticus, Barnacle, and uh, uh, Spec that Person. Guy. Spec Person. Overcoming the staircase is what looks to be uh, your friend Rod, but his whole face is a scene of gore. Half burnt, <laughs> completely smashed to smithereens, blood everywhere. And he's fallen twice, so he's kind of shambling over that. So I want you guys to make intelligence tests to see if he's if you recognize that he's not a zombie or not. Oh please, let me think. Well, I'm a I'm a goat, so I know it's just them two. Right? Oh, you're a goat. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, barnacle. Roll. Uh, it's two your six. intelligence plus three should be plus pretty three. easy. Oh, uh -oh. partial. It's okay. And what are we doing? Intelligence. Yep. Oh, this I should have be good no for modifier, so it's just oh, okay. a two D six run, right? Okay. Yep. Is your what's your intelligence? His intelligence is twelve. Minus okay. twelve. That would be yeah. nothing, I guess. So just two D, right? Yeah. Two D six. Two D six kissed him. Both Again are. with the partials. Alright, so you both you're not quite sure, but you're pretty sure. And then Rod walks over and Rod, do you what do you say? <laughs> oh, I take my sword out. I don't know. I kind of tried to give Rod an out, but if that you is did. that literally what you say, you come out. No going, jokes, oh. jokes, guys. Jokes. <laughs> All right, everyone. Oh. When Spec Pass and the Fed recognizes that to be a living Rod. Rod, it's good I'm to hard, have you. I, I'm hard of hearing. I don't hear him. Hey guys, what of the zombies? Are they still coming? I make goat noises. And hopefully Rod fills in there. Uh, yeah, hopefully nope. Rod fills in there. <laughs> They're all Rod. gone. And I was their master. They didn't turn around. They all went home. That person the third is impressed. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's make our way in here. What say you, Bonacle? Yeah, I've been looking around in here, and I haven't seen anything moving, but there's definitely some creepiness in this room. I would say it's not all that it appears to be. Can All I right. do that thing that rolls for you? Do you have another thing of it? Uh, if they're caltrops, can I use them again? or? You can only use you, that. You can only use those once a day. Okay, then but I can. You can totally discern realities. If that's what oh, you're yeah, yeah. We'll discern some realities. I don't know if you have a spell or something, but yeah. You can roll against, what is that, wisdom? A rat. I think. And that's a 2d6 with plus. One. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, you Is get that? to do it again? Yeah, yeah, 2d6. Yeah, you can discern realities like once every room. So, yeah, you don't. No. Nope. That's just a straight up fail. I don't see nothing here. Never mind. <laughs> nothing Forget happens. it, guys. Yeah. Everything seems cool. Yeah, I turn back into a, a normal human Jeff and, and move forward. Okay. What What's in this room in front of us? It's just cobwebs and stuff? Yeah, so Spec Person the Third kind of leads you guys. He's got his sword out, his, his gorgeous and en en enameled, you know, beautiful sword. Uh, and he's walking forward, and you guys kind of come down to the base of the stairs. The zombies seem to have left. There's none pursuing you at all. They, for what you know, whatever story Rod gave you guys seems to be the truth of it. They're moving off in another direction. Uh, and and there's this long table with big waxen candles up and down it. There's dinner setting places everywhere, but they're not. There's no food. And you guys kind of uh, you know looking around. There's not a lot of doors. There's there's you know, like cabinets with uh, plates and settings, and there's pictures along the wall. Um, do you guys look at the pictures, or do you investigate? What do you do? Yeah, I mean, I, I try to look at the pictures and see if it's... <clears throat> I, I ask spec person or anyone else if they, if they know anyone within these pictures, or if it's just relatives of the, the necromancer or something like that. I, actually, I, I go to... I forgot. I go to uh, Barnacle, and I say, have, have you seen these people before? You, you were familiar with this, this man's family? I'm asking if, if you've noticed or recognize anyone in the pictures. And that's probably a question that Jeff needs to answer, not you. Yeah, so Barnacle, <laughs> do a, do a, an intelligence test. Just a straight-up intelligence test. 2d6 plus 3. 
Is that it? Did I miss it? No. No, it hasn't rolled yet. 2d6 plus 3. <laughs> Can you hear us, Rachel? Yeah. Yeah, what happened? Roll 2d6 All of plus us? 3. No, no, just All two. Of us. Just two. Oh, I did it. I got a crappy one. 2d6 oh. plus 3. It's rolled. Oh, there we go. There it okay, is. Eight. There it's it is. partial. Uh, your memory's a little bit foggy, but you're pretty sure these are not related to the necromancer. And uh, Sir, uh, what's his name? Uh, God, what do I always forget his name? Spec Person the Third oh. sees you guys kind of pontificating about the pictures, and he says, "Ah, uh, no, those are old man McDerdy, but he had a big, big, big family. Famous, uh, not a general per se, but he was uh, kind of the town sheriff. Then he went recluse. Nobody saw him, and that's why the tower has now been kind of ignored for a while now." So, yeah. And in each of the pictures, as you look closer, it's it's like a different year of the same guy uh, in different positions. One is with a hunting dog. The other is atop of a stallion. There's one with him holding, you know, like a scroll in front of him. None of them seem to be anything particularly spooky or, or informative, but just, you know, he's very, uh, all pictures of himself. So you can take from that what you will. Say, so, yeah. Perfect. Great. Uh, do you know where he's supposed to be in this tower? Should we just keep going up? Uh, the necromancer, no. no. I don't know where he's here. We just know that he is here, but uh, Spec Pest in the Third would like to think that uh, it's probably something to do with the tower. It's in the back of the building, and it's way up there high. Well, great. Why don't you lead us there, Spec Person? You seem to Very know, good. have a handle on what's going on. Well, uh, Spec we'll... Pest in the Third. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that uh, nothing sneaks up behind us. Uh... We'll be right behind you. Okay, so he uh, he gives a nod to this and starts to kind of make his way. You guys walk down the length of the dining hall. Uh, again, just more of the same. Nothing nothing super grabby. Uh, cobwebs, yes, but not the seemingly live live webbing that you encountered earlier. Make your way to the end. Um, to the right seems to be kind of a servant entryway into a, the kitchen, and from the kitchen you would know that it probably leads to like a pantry and you know, kind of the servant area of things. And then to the left, left, excuse me, uh, is more of a, another door. Don't know where that leads to, but straight ahead is a large uh, archway that leads into a, a tower. And then at the end of the, or not a tower, excuse me, a tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel, you can see what looks to be daylight. Yeah, we start, do, what do you do? We start walking towards the, the tunnel with daylight at the end. Okay. Just to see what the, what's it sign. The, the light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. Yeah. Spec person the third remains at the front, but he kind of follows your guys' lead. You guys walk down this tunnel. The sconces uh, here are not lit, but it's fine because you can see daylight ahead. You come out, and you come out into a big um, kind of open courtyard area that has that w it would have had vegetation and stuff like that, but they are completely fucking dead. Like. They are skeletons of their former selves. You know, there's a bush, but the bush is just gnarled old uh, branches in every which way with no leaves whatsoever. The dirt is as dry as it could be. Um, everything is dead. Uh, but in this courtyard, there are four statues. And again, it looks to be four statues of Old Man McDirty Butt in different positions, but more warlike positions in the front overlooking a fountain that's completely dry and empty. One is him holding a spear. The other is two swords. Another one is him with a, like a hammer, and the last one is just him with fire coming out of his hands, but very, again, egocentric statues of the same guy. Um, and in this courtyard, there seems to be, again, it would have looked like a water kind of rings around it, but it's bare of water. Um, fountain is the centerpiece. On the other side of the courtyard is a pillared, what looks to be like a darker version of, if you could imagine, the front of the White House, like a big mansion set like that. And then just over the top of that is the big tower. Again, foreboding dark clouds. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's all you see. What do you do? I want well, to uh, walk up and inspect the statues. And I notice that he's kind of looking like he's falling apart, even though he's really strong looking and he wants to, to look tough. He looks like he might be sick or, or a little messed up or a little war-torn in these statues. You notice this from the statues? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, the statues are big. They're larger than life. They're, you know, nine feet tall, stone versions of himself. Uh, he's wearing, you know, what looks to be armor in, in, the, in the statue versions of himself. So that's what you notice. I look at uh, 
look towards um, Scuticus and, and say like, well, what, Scuticus, what would you do here? You know, you well, fought I mean, many wars. You, you've, you've been in world. combat situations such as this. Where should we go? What should I we mean, do? we already know that, that, that spec, spec guy is, is tried and true, and he says the tower is where we need to go. We can see the tower now. We're burning daylight. So we need to get our ass to that tower. Let's take care of this necromancer so I can get some alcohol in my system and get some money. Spec person the third thinks uh, the way you think is good. Yeah, Thank so you, we buddy. Start going towards the tower then. Okay, so you guys cross the courtyard. You start walking over there. Uh, it's it's eerily silent here, by the way, as well. It's, it feels like even sound has died here. Uh, it's open air. The walls aren't 100 feet high. They're, you know, 20 feet or whatever. But it still feels like you're in a strange bubble of vacuum of just nothingness. There's no, there's no sound of any kind of uh, note. You make your way across the courtyard just fine. You get to the other side, and it looks like a, this is more stonework than anything else. The outside of this mansion was, was a stone and wood and whatnot, but this is just pure stone, almost temple-esque. And there is no door. It just leads into a, an oval high ceilinged main area and kind of similar to the building you just came in there's again a spiral staircase leading up to double doors uh excuse me not double doors an archway again it's all stone at this point in time sure um and inside of here this this uh seems weird to you there's actually vegetation there's like vines growing out of stones there's there's plants that sprouted from the corners uh there, there's just a lot of green vegetation all over the place. Is there any? Do I notice any animals or anything fluttering about? Any birds or any? It's all no just animals. Vegetation? Yep. Um, yeah, the doors to or the towers just right in front of us with all the stuff around it. Yep. It just has a door on it that looks like any other door. No door. It's just a. It's an open archway, like a. Oh, okay. I, I, I kind of like. Motion my or turn myself to the side and, and motion the party forward. Let's go. Okay. So you guys walk in. Um, as you enter, there's no. Uh, you guys don't do perception. That's not a. That's not a thing, right? You just. Uh, not really. No. It, if it's on us to say like we want to, uh, perceive real or whatever the fucking thing is, discern realities. Okay. So as you walk in, um, it's fairly nondescript except for like I said, it's very alarming that there is vegetation all over the place. Uh, and you have the choice to either go up this. Well, what do you guys do? So it's spiral staircase leading up to that archway. Below it is like a like a smaller tunnel, um, not nearly as grand as the other ones you've been through, but big enough to fit all of you as well. No doors on the side. There's just pillars with like busts of uh, old man McDirty butt in different facial positions along the wall. But it mm -hmm. all seems to be leading up to this archway. So you guys are just gonna walk up and do normal things. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shape change. Let's see how it goes. Two six plus three. Oh motherfucker! <laughs> so, so what you try happens to on start a fail? vibrating, and then you don't. Yeah, I guess it just doesn't work. Okay, well, that fucking sucks. Uh, well, I'm looking knows. at the oh. the staircases and the archway, and I'm thinking this is kind of like a warrior Jesus Holy Grail situation where they really kind of want us to do the fancy thing, but we might find some better stuff if we uh, take the more private entrance um so as you guys start oh so you, you're just saying that I'm, I'm rallying the team to my cause yeah I, I after just failing i feel a little bit insecure about what's going on I'm just like oh yeah yeah that that sounds perfect let's go <laughs> we're great let's go so you guys go through the bottom door yeah i i would agree with her and say yeah let's let's not go the this upward might be a trap let's uh let's take the sneaky stealthy way okay and who leads the way we send rod yep Rod, in case we meet any more undead, he can uh, use his newly found skill way. that he forgot about all game. So long. Rod walks in first and starts leading down, and this is a little bit of a longer, and it's a dark tunnel too, by the way. It's not lit. Uh, but once you walk for you know a couple minutes, n nothing super extreme, like let's say two minutes, but that makes it like a you know two hundred foot tunnel. It's fairly claustrophobic. There's not a whole lot going on in there. You get towards the end, and you once again see daylight. And as you get closer to it, you start to hear the, the clinging and clanging of, of weapons and, and movement. Uh, it sounds very much so like, a, you know, if you were at home, what it would sound like when soldiers are kind of at the yard, 
so to speak. Nothing super violent, no war sounds, but definitely sparring kind of sounds. What do you do? Um, I celebrate that they're playing music for our entrance, and <laughs> I continue to lead the party on forward. You just march forward? Yep. So, so Rod Breslau just walks forward in front of all this. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously they're expecting us to come, and this is the way that they can celebrate that. Yeah. So we... you're starting to get like the, the good feeling of Warrior Jesus in your in your step is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. So Rod starts to mind. kind of walk a little bit faster than the rest of you. Uh, um, do you guys feel concerned by these sounds, or or can I say that you're all inspired by Rod and you all march as well? I would say intrigued is more of a better word than inspired. Yeah. Rod, okay. Rod Breslau would never inspire me, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll walk forward. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's definitely lost his fucking mind, so I, I have my sword drawn, but I'm going nice and slow, keeping an eye on the back of the party. I am in no hurry to see where that noise is coming from, because I will get there eventually, and maybe Rod will die in the meantime, so I'm cool <laughs> with that. I wasn't really yep. paying attention, and I sort of just followed right behind Rod, so... There you go. Very nice. All right, so you guys start marching forward. Uh, because it's not really a super cautious step, um, I'm going to say uh, Spec Pearson III, um, his, he's wearing full plate mail, so he actually is giving off some sound. He's not obviously like, you know, he's not like just jumbling down there, but he's making noise. You guys get down there. You get more towards the end of the tunnel, and you can start to see that it leads out into an open space again. And from your angle, you can see what looks like um, kind of like an archway, or not an archway, excuse me, but a higher like second floor that it has walking paths around this open area. And in the open area, there is, you can't see an exact number, but from your vision in the back of this darkened tunnel, you see a good two lines of what looks to be like 10 lizard men. You guys know these quite well. You've, you know, people have been at war with them before. Um, you've probably encountered them in your journeys as, as traveling adventurers. And they're wearing just very basic, like a leather vest, basically, and that's it. Uh, and they're sparring. They're just hitting swords off of each other. Uh, they don't make a whole lot of sound other than that. In fact, it's kind of uh, uneasy. It makes you feel uneasy with how silent they are, other than the sounds of their stuff. So no, no voices whatsoever? It doesn't look like there's someone directing them to do this? From your angle, uh, you cannot see if someone is directing them. You can just see this two rows of, of lizardmen. I, I motioned to Rod Breslau. Why, why don't you go introduce yourself? Uh, I accept your motion. I believe, as my past experiences have shown thus far, that these men will be, these lizard men will be much willing to listen to me. Perfect. So what do you do, Rod? Uh, I approach and offer them to join <laughs> our team. So Rod walks out from the darkened tunnel do you guys follow, or what happens with you guys? I, I stop once we see these guys, and when I motion Rod, that's right where I stand. I don't move from there. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I stand mean, back and watch Rod walk forward. He's, yeah, he's got this. I've caught up to the other three, Barnacle and Token, and I see what Rod's walking into, and I start going. I never knew my brother would do that. Spec leans in and says. Spec Pest in the third does not understand what he's doing. What is he doing? <laughs> I, 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 I turned to Spec toward, like, I slowly just leaned down. I'm just like, I believe he's trying to make them much like himself. <laughs> I just go back to acting. Spec Pest in the third is completely weirded out by this guy again. So, Rod, you walk out, uh, and, and the gust of fresh air kind of picks up your cloak a little bit, and it blows out behind you, and... Um, other than that, you are a hideous wreck. Your face, again, is a complete... It's a car accident. You've been smashed over and over again. Blood is crusted on your face. Uh, other than that, you're halfway to Nightmare on Elm Street with what you're doing with your head as well. Uh, if you can imagine, you have hair on half your head. You have your jerry, your jerry curls on half your head, but the other half has been scorched off. So you look like some kind of terrifying monster, and you come out. Uh, you're also coming out very boldly, like kind of, I guess you're like making the sign of the cross and saying "peace be with you, brothers," and walking forward. And the lizard men, as you can see now, there's there's roughly about fifteen of them. They all kind of like clanging, clanging, stop, and then they turn to you. And if you guys have ever seen a lizard when it sees something, it just kind of like turns, 
and stares blankly with big, you know, reptilian eyes just kind of staring at you. And at the center of the, uh, the yard, you can see what looks to be something that, again, you guys all recognize as a kobold, which is far and away smaller than the lizard men. It's about half as big, but they're known to be much more intelligent. They're kind of leader, leader creatures, basically. And it's got its hands clasped behind its back. It's not holding any weapon of any kind. And it sees you, and it perks up a little bit. It's, it's roughly like four feet tall, so it's actually, you know, again, a very small creature. And uh, it tilts its head a little bit. And I guess the other things you notice is, again, you do see that if you would have taken the top stairs, you could, wa you could have walked around this, this courtyard area, uh, perhaps undetected. I don't know. Uh, and then on the other side is a door leading to the spiral staircase that goes up the tower. And the kobold, with its hand still clasped behind its back, walks all the way up to you and just stares up at you. What do you do, Rod? Just kind of. And all stare the other lizards are kind of walking slowly up behind it. By the way, stare back, with my head half shaved, my face half burnt off. <laughs> There's nothing that I have not withstand thus far that some fucking lizard man is going to intimidate me. You literally just stare back down into this kobold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to say about a minute and a half of this strange encounter <laughs> goes on where finally the, the lizard men... We're in the back and like, what's happening? What's, what's going on? They they, do, are, they, are they communicating? <laughs> they do very slowly shuffle up behind the kobolds. You're literally standing there staring down at this three-foot-tall lizard man kobold that's staring back up at you. No one said a word in, in what, at this point in time, is like two and a half minutes. They don't see the people behind uh... And the lizard kind of takes its hand and very slowly reaches up and touches your nose. <laughs> Rod, what do you do? Uh, my nose has been broken, so one, I'm in an extreme <laughs> amount of pain as he has touched my broken nose. Uh, you just and shout two, out. Uh, yes, I, I feel comfort that he touched my nose. Uh, ever since I was a young kid and baby, I'm... Used to people circling <laughs> my nose, and it really brought me home. So I feel connection now. So okay, thank you for telling us how you feel. But what do you do? <laughs> do, you, do you talk to him? Do you make an action, or do you just stand there? <laughs> hug him, man. Hug it out. Uh, yeah, we hug it out. <laughs> you go for a hug. I, hug, like I go in for a hug. <laughs> yeah. You just throw up your hands like this. Uh, roll a dexterity check. Because it's it's surprised by this, so I'll give you I'll let the dice speak for you. <laughs> you fail. <laughs> <laughs> so Rod, <laughs> you, uh, it reaches up and poops your nose. And you go ah! But then immediately afterwards, you're like, "But I like that." And then you kind of reach down to go hug it, and in doing so, by leaning forward. Some of like the uh, the dried blood and pus kind of spills off your face and lands on it, and you you have a tough time dealing with depth perception because you've been banged up so bad in your face. You actually headbutt the top of its head again, smashing your nose further into your head, and uh, you you kind of grab for it, but it's too short. And it's you ever tried to like hug you know like a three foot tall girl? Like it's just the most awkward thing ever, and you're you're doing this weird thing. And it like fights to get out from underneath you, backs away, and then it rips a, it pulls out a, a dagger from its side and signals to the rest and points at you, and they start to close in. What do you do? Can we see this from where we're at? We see oh yeah, these people. And can see they see past? us? Have I, they seen us we, yet? Can we use this as an opportunity to run past while they're distracted? Sure. They don't notice you guys. That Rod literally, guys, imagine this. He walks out like just completely boldly, okay. and just stands there and stares at their leader for two and a half minutes, and then tries right. to hug him. Token and Barnacle, if you'll notice the the upper deck there, I think the stairs behind us lead up top. I suggest oh, yeah, yeah. No, I that. that we use this little distraction of Rod making sweet love to the Cobalt. Uh, uh, to sneak, go back down the tunnel and get up on that upper deck area. Maybe we can save him from there, or at least we're not going to die with him. Sound good? Because that's where I'm going. Perfect. Yeah, great. Let's I'm go. I'm following you, Scooticus. Yeah. Right. Thumbs up. Let's do it. 
So then we head yeah, back to the set of stairs place. and back up to that upper walkway. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say that takes... It took about two and a half minutes to walk here. So if you go into a dead sprint, let's say it'll be about to go all the way out up the stairs and then around the, the railing, three and a half minutes total. So, Rod, you don't so, know this. You've got three and a half minutes of lizard time. We took Spec Guy with us, too, by the way, of yeah. course. Okay. We, we offered him to come, yeah. Yes. If he followed, he followed. Oh, he followed. He's uh, so as, as they approach me... Uh, I've done what I have done previously in situations like this, and I mundanely talk about my life to them as they <laughs> approach so that they are unable to attack me initially for at least a minute or two uh, All right, while they're sprinting. You're trying to talk Jesus again, so do your parlay. 